Well, I really appreciate you coming back for more of this stuff. Um, I, uh, I just um, really enjoy doing these videos. And, and I know some of you are tired of talking about reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders and you wish I'd do some QRP stuff or some RC airplane stuff. But I'm just kind of on this run with the the uh, reel to reel tape recorders. I think I'm like at 985 uh, or 87, number 87 tape recorder. I've been thinking about putting together a website that would, uh, uh, you know, have a link for each one of these videos and show a little bit about the tape recorders and, or the vintage electronics, not just tape recorders. But this is a really long video and it is a repair video. So, you know, and there's a lot of, of, troubleshooting and discussion about that and so you know uh, if, if you're not into long videos then don't watch this one you know you probably wouldn't get anything out of it but if you're a technician and you like uh, to watch troubleshooting videos and and like to anticipate repairs then hang in there with me uh, I would appreciate it um, I, I read this is really an open uh, 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 an un unboxing a legitimate unboxing and then getting the thing and I didn't know anything about this Continental not the first thing about it other than my experience with working with tape recorders of course but it's a fine piece of equipment I finished the tape recorder a little spoiler alert here I finished the tape uh, repair uh, it wasn't 100% repair there's still a little bit of warble in the audio which you'll be able to pick up on that but it's got really good fidelity. The tape recorder is really well made, and uh, uh, the folks in Holland really know how to make a good solid uh, tape recorder. They designed it, I understand, to withstand a lot of high humidity things, so international travel uh, drops, um, and it really is a solid piece of equipment. So um, we did get it repaired all at the end. Um, at the very end of the video, there's a four minute, I think, something like that, um, audio um, piece that you don't have to watch or listen to. It was a recitation of some kind that I found on the tape. And uh, I think you'll find some interesting things along the way on this tape. <laughs> it just shocked me. You just never know what you're going to find on these reel to reel tapes. And uh, this, was, this was a very unusual uh, uh, tape. As you will you will soon find out so anyway now I'm just trying to, to give you an update on what to expect with this particular video and uh, would really appreciate your comments and thoughts and feedback on the uh, Norelco Continental 101 well I've got another eBay treasure here that I want to uh, share with you and it's still packaged up so let's open it up and uh, take a look this is a uh, one that I have been looking for for quite a long time and just because of the unusual format and layout of the, uh, the tape player so let's see here what we've got don't know what condition it's in after shipping uh, kind of rattling here let's see here This is the uh, Holland made Norelco and as you can see, to turn correctly here, as you can see the uh, tape 
rides across the top of the uh, tape player. All transistor. Uh, that's not turning, not sure why. Um, got a nice cover that doesn't have any cracks that I can see. Well, one little crack. And it's missing the tab to hold it in place. Uh, let's, uh, let's set these aside for the time being and uh, probably, what would you say, probably the record. So you hold that and press that for record. I don't know. Okay, so we got some work to do for sure. Let's just take a look at it. Got a battery gauge there, maybe a record level, I don't know. The handle seems to be in decent shape. Microphone. with its proprietary plug, or DIN plug, three, three connector plug. There's no on off switch, so not sure what those three wires do. But you can see there, speaker, pretty good size speaker. The foam there is gone, falling apart. All right, let's see what the battery compartment looks like. Two one and a half volts here, four here. So six D size batteries. A little bit of corrosion, but not too bad, honestly. As you can see, not, not too bad. Um, yeah, it looks like a three inch speaker. Sure why that's locked up, but it is. So we can pull the handle off, set it aside. It is a capstan drive. Which is nice. Let's move these. Take a look inside here. Pinch roller looks to be in good shape. Oh, pull it forward to release it. Duh. So, if this were going to be record, that would be record, and then, yeah, it kind of sort of releases the record button, and I don't know if this is just for symmetry, or what this is, um, I... I don't know. I don't know what that is, but when we get it apart, we'll look at it. it might just be put there for... It does have an opening, so don't know what that would do. 
it, it's um, if it is a button it's appears to be frozen in place there so we'll get it apart and take a look and those of you that have had this tape recorder and have seen videos on this tape recorder you're way ahead of me I have not seen any videos on this tape recorder and um, looks like some folks have been in this one before look at all the scratch marks on the thing to try to get that c-clip off you've dug into that thing pretty badly so somebody's been into this thing before scratch that up pretty good so hopefully it's not in too bad a condition I don't see any external power connectors so we're definitely going to have to run it off of six D batteries just gonna look at my stash over here I have three uh -huh. So I'll have to rob some batteries out of one of the other units over here in the collection to uh, see if we can get this thing to fire up. I would be interested to know whether it'll even, I, I don't know why this is stuck, but um, it would be interesting to see if any of the motors, if the motor runs. Why don't we do that? Why don't we put batteries in it and just see if we can get it to run and then we'll go from there. Alrighty. Some of these Amazon batteries. And uh, put them in. I corrode it doesn't look too corroded so we'll just see if that's an issue sound no sound oh yeah there we go fast forward okay We'll look down in here. Let me zoom in. Oops, sorry. Zoom in here. You can see the uh, capstan roller. Uh, let me kill the back. There we go. Capstan. Now watch when I... Lots of crud on there. Cat hair or something. play okay play is working and let's try rewind <laughs> kind of a slow start there I don't know if it's belt drive or tire drive. Yeah, this is not holding up too well here. And barely, barely. Take up is working pretty good, but rewind. Fast forward is working fairly good, but rewind is not enough there to do anything. So maybe it's tire drive. Let's 
sounds like tire drive. Now that's probably strong enough to, to pull it. So the motor is definitely noisy. Looks like a 1 and 7 8 speed, doesn't it? Maybe 3 and 3 quarters, I'm not sure. But that doesn't look terribly fast. Okay, and we know we don't have any adjustment here. Just gummed up. Oh, man. Let's see if I can get that to turn. Yeah, it is turning. But it is really gummed up. Let's turn it all the way up. Oh, I meant to check the battery gauge, too. Yeah. So the battery gauge is working on play. I don't hear any noise in the speaker at all. Let me turn all the way up. Oh man, that's tight. Okay, so that's turned all the way up. Not hearing any, any noise on the speaker at all. Let me turn the tape back on there. See if we have any balance of power. That's interesting. Balance of power. I wonder what that's about. No audio. Okay, and what I like to do with these tapes is to just see if there's anything on them. So let's get another tape deck up here and just do a real quick check. I've got the uh, Vesper R400 here that I did a repair video on. Let's see, I think this is a three and three quarter speed, if I remember correctly. Okay, so it must be a 1 and 7 eighths. Question, do I have a 1 and 7 eighths tape deck readily available? Let's find I do. I have a 1 and 7 eighths recorder right over here. So let's put this sweetie away. And uh, we've got a web core here, which uh, has a 3 and 3 quarter or 1 and 7 eighths setting. Um... Let's see if was this even playing? Barely. Okay, it's barely working, but it's it's still working. So let's see, we get the right tape here. And uh Set on three and three quarter right now, but we'll we'll drop it. I think this is designed to be turned on. All the speed is designed to be changed while it's playing. Okay, I uh, I can't play what is on this tape. It's some very very 
foul. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. I don't know if he's reading a dirty book or what, but it is absolutely disgusting. So I'm sorry, but I can't play. No, I'm not sorry, but I can't play this on YouTube. But this is the craziest thing I have ever heard. Um, I'm going to fast forward it a little bit here and see if um, there's uh, anything else on here that's presentable, but it's definitely pretty trashy. Okay. <laughs> Well, that wasn't nearly as bad. I uh, never heard that poem before. Maybe some of you have. All right, I'm going to add the poem to the end of this video for you to hear it. So we're kind of distracted from our Norelco <laughs> playing this on the web core is a lot of fun. But, okay, so we know there's something on this tape. Some things we can hear and some things we can't. But in any case, and it's recorded at 1 and 7 eighths uh, tape speed. Don't know if that's an adjustable thing with the Norelco or not. Doesn't seem to be any adjustments um, on the tape deck itself here. So, um, anyway, we'll uh, we'll see if we can get into the Norelco and uh, figure out what we need to do about the amplifier. Get the audio working. And uh, we'll just kind of take it one step at a time. So let's get the case open on the Norelco. And, and uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be listening to the rest of this tape. And we'll edit what we can hear on YouTube and, and uh, blank out the stuff that we can't. do a show a recap and so many of you are tired of seeing recaps that I've tried to avoid those as much as possible but then I get emails and comments that I should have let the tape recorder play during the uh, the recap so wow this is a really crude very old transistor unit and let's zoom in and um, let's zoom in and take a look at the uh, insides here speakers in good shape so this is gummed up and that'll be easy to to clean up the uh, volume control is so tight you can't turn it um, interesting capacitors. Look at them all in their plastic clips and um, in their plastic stands. All kinds of, there's the uh, audio trans, uh, transistors. And I believe this is the motor, the motor case. Um, you probably can see down in there, let me turn the flashlight on here. Um, looks like a governor controlled motor. And uh, yeah, there's a tire. The fast forward tire. I suppose the rewind is back in here somewhere. Okay. All right, comes right off, which is great, and it has a schematic. That's that's terrific. So let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so there's seven transistors. 
one of the transistors just drives the meter. So the audio has the push-pull transistors here, the driver transistor, so there's two transformers, and then there's the, uh, the three transistors for the preamp. Here's the microphone jack. So they are PNP transistors. These four are the same OC75s. These two are OC72s. And this is an OC70. Not sure what this is right here. 11 and 12. But in any case, we'll keep looking, figure out what we can do to get audio to work. There's the transformers. Those brown tan units are the transformers for the audio. And that post that we were looking at a moment ago here doesn't do anything, it's just, just a post. Here's the record. I'm pretty sure that's the record switch. And you can see right here, when I push the record button, watch the switch. See it? It's running off of a cable. So it pushes over. So we'll spray all those contacts. We'll spray this volume control. Here's some reed switches for play right here. They probably wonder if they're motor. No, that wouldn't be motor. It's not motor. But um, could be some dirty connections here causing an issue for audio. Don't know yet. Sure would be great if we didn't have to recap this, this jewel. So let's get started with some deoxid spray and see if we can spray a few switches. And then, uh, these are the capacitors here. Very interesting capacitor setup. But, you know, it's made in, uh, where did we say it's made? In Holland. So, Norelco Company had a unique capacitor setup. There's a transistor. Look at those transistors. Okay, so let's spray some switches and uh, we'll connect um, our power. You can tell by the schematic where the power ties in. Nine volts. We know we have motor control with the 9 volts. Now, whether or not we have power getting to the amplifier circuits, we'll find out in a moment. But uh, so let's uh, let's hook up 9 volts to the uh, to the deck through the power supply I have over here, and then we won't have to tinker with batteries. Of course, polarity is important. And if we don't get that right, we could damage some things if there's not any polarity protection. So if the batteries are put in backwards, I imagine they probably wired some protection in there. We could look at the schematic. But as you can see, 
the uh, the long tube, the negative is down here because the tip of the battery is positive, and then it goes through the cover to positive goes through the cover, and uh, or I've got that backwards actually. This is the short side. This is the long side. So the uh, the long side is right here so this is positive and then this would be negative positive and negative so yeah see the back of the battery right there will be right here like this so this is negative and these four batteries come here positive so we're going to hook up our power here maybe might have to uh, add some jumpers got the low current set for pretty low so if we have a short or I have something hooked up incorrectly okay. full power running about 160 milliamps 170 milliamps 180 milliamps there it goes it's turning Hundred and sixty, hundred and seventy milliamps. Okay. Um Okay, there is a spring right here. See it? That doesn't appear to be hooked up to anything. It's not. Which is might might be why um it's uh I wonder if it's supposed to be hooked up here. Let me, let me show you what we're looking at here. That spring was just hanging in there. We need to get that fixed too. Um, this spring right here is connected to the record and there's a, there's a hole right there. I suspect that that might be why that switch didn't want to pop back and it is popping back now. See, it's still gooey. But that's what that spring does. Helps pull the record back off of its position. And what we'll do is we'll close up that because that's just going to pop right back off. We'll, we'll either put a drop of glue on the end of this spring to keep it from popping off. And uh, But we definitely need to oil some things to get this to work a little smoother. You can see right in here. So we'll oil that. Working like a champ now. Okay. I'll put a 
a little bit on this volume control shaft. See if we can get it to uh, free up a little bit. Here we go. All right, we need to spray this switch the oxit. So we're going to get in behind it here. Okay. Right in there, see? I'll put this cloth underneath that so if it drips, it'll drip into the uh, cloth. Uh, let's hook the power back up. Look at that. So this pot was dirty. Hear the audio? Terrific. Okay, now the capstan is really gummed up. So let's unhook the power. Capstan is really gummed up. And uh, I want you to see, because I don't think you'll be able to see it on camera. But I've got a lot of crud there. And the way it was growling kind of makes me think that the uh, shaft needs some oil. So what we're going to do is take some electronic cleaner, which is non-corrosive, and we're going to just spray down in here. Get rid of that crud. Kind of clean up the belts or the tires. See this tire on the, the unit? It's spinning a lot better now. So let's see what it does now. You should be able to see that that roller flywheel. Okay. We've got some corrosion. Got a really hot amplifier now. Woo. The switch itself is Other switches around here that are
Okay, the motor. Yeah, we've got we've got some other dirty contacts somewhere. Not sure. You can see I'm wiggling things around and and it impact. It might be this pot that's just bad. And might be the capacitors are reforming. Yeah, could be a dirty solder connection. Could be a lot of things. That definitely that record switch record place switch is definitely corroded and I can see some of the contacts now so we'll juice that up good oh yeah that helped that helped so we're getting we're making some progress really hot amplifier the the tape is not turning for some reason As you can see it's not not turning so the motor is not engaging uh, correctly let's uh, look right here let me get it on camera there we go there's the tip of the motor let me move this these wires see the motor and how it shifts there's an o-ring on the motor that is rough so in in and uh and brittle as glass so that o-ring that o-ring right there is just brittle and that's what engages the capstan flywheel so we've got to replace that o-ring and that should be an easy one to replace because i've got some o-rings that will fit i'm pretty sure um, so let's, uh, yeah, we can get it to run a little bit, see, but not running great. All right. So let's replace the O-ring on the drive motor to start with, and then, um, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I got the uh, the hardened tire that was uh, on the motor pulled off. It was just as hard as brittle. See, it's just a brittle piece of plastic now. And I installed a uh, rubber tire here. You can see it in the light there, I guess. Let me zoom in a little more. And um, it's it's working. It's not perfect, but it is working. And I'll show you here. We'll just uh, fire up the motor. It's a little quieter. Definitely driving correctly now. See, it's definitely working. This right here. Snap ring came off of that tire. There it goes. It's working fine. Okay. Rewind. It does use a belt. Play. And fast forward okay there we go um, let's wire this with power so that we can stand it up and uh, put a tape in it okay I don't know that we're getting any audio we knew we had some audio on this tape remember yeah, so, 
So the amplifier is working, but we're not getting anything through the preamp right now. There we go. We're on the third part of the tape. So we got some dirty connections. Finally reached New York to that Groove Street walk-up flat where dwelt that callous Dover kid, a beatnik from the past. He's been rolling dope since time began. Now, all right, I have no idea what we're listening to here, so I have to be. I'm probably going to have to bleep out some of this. Man, who smoked reefer? Yeah, got bad. Bad connection on that one switch. Okay, I, I can't use this tape at all. It's just loaded with all kinds of uh, superfluity of naughtiness. So we're not going to use that tape. And um, so we'll record another tape and, uh, and play it back on this unit. I can use the web core. I'm not going to erase this tape necessarily, but... Uh, I'll use one of these other tapes that I've got here on the web core and we'll uh, record some test audio to play back. Okay, I've got some O-rings here. Pretty sure one of these will work. I think this one might be the ticket or this one. Let's put this one in there or this one. I believe this might fit. Power. Well, we had power. Okay. Oh my goodness, yeah. Much quieter. Yeah. Very little vibration. Much quieter. Okay, we'll tighten that up just a little bit more. rubber o-ring is a little slippery might have a film on it so let's take some actually let's take some rubber renew give it just a little bit of that stuff is really stout 
very strong. Still slipping. Very quiet on play. So let's see how the recording turns out. Um, so hopefully now we've got a decent recording. All right, let's just record right there. All righty, we're recording and we got a needle bump. Okay, yeah, let's crank this volume up just a little bit, a little more. Check, check. There we go. Oh, that's a little too hot. There we go. Now um, we're checking to see if we got rid of that vibration in the recording, it's definitely quieter. And I don't feel any vibration in the motor. We could always switch to one of these uh, black tire O-rings. These O-rings are a little bit hard. And that's part of the reason why the uh, rewind is a little bit slow. So let's check and see what kind of audio quality we have uh let's see what kind of audio record we got now quality that we have now and no more vibration hopefully yeah see it's just a little hard for the rewind and the motor's spinning super fast and that's why it's slipping okay Erase head, and we're going to get a better recording. Um, so hopefully now we've got a decent recording. All right, here we go. Ready? All righty, we're recording, and we got a needle bump. Okay, yeah, let's crank this volume up just a little bit, a little more. Check, check. There we go. Oh, that's a little too hot. There we go. Now um, we're checking to see if we got rid of that vibration in the recording it's definitely quieter and i don't feel any vibration in the motor we could always switch to one of these uh black tire o-rings these o-rings are a little bit hard and that's part of the reason why the uh, rewind is a little bit slow so let's check and see what kind of audio quality we have uh yeah still have it uh, let's see what kind of audio record we got now quality that we have now and no more vibration hopefully okay so not the best definitely not really bad um i don't think i've got one that'll work this one And get under it without damaging it if I can there we go oh I'm not sure if I penetrated the no I got it good all right we're gonna put that one aside and um, I'm gonna try one more to 
it's not quite as I it could be that the motor is spinning inside here and uh, this has got a smaller inside diameter if I can stretch it onto the, uh, the motor shaft yeah it definitely doesn't like that rubber so it doesn't want to rewind yeah put a black tire on there and so it is definitely quieter and we're definitely um, the motor is almost completely silent now I, uh, I don't feel any vibration so if we have any warble now it might be in the electronics in the uh, biasing or something but it definitely is quiet now the recorder is dead silent playing yeah it's just dead silent and also the rewind function works so let's try that see the rewind is working great now so let's play it back it is definitely quieter and we're definitely uh, the motor is almost completely silent now I, uh, I don't feel any vibration so if we have any warble now it might be in the electronics in the uh, biasing or something but it definitely is quiet now the recorder is dead silent playing yeah it's just dead silent and already we're recording now uh once again on the microphone and uh just checking to see how our speech turned out and it's doing pretty well we still have that vibration but i don't think it was related to the motor i believe the motor is quiet now um and definitely transport the transport system is much better condition than when we started so we've made a lot of improvements here so i think we'll now that we've got the o-ring on the motor let's put it all back together and then we'll do a final recording and final uh playback and call this one finished vibration but i don't think it was related to the motor I believe the motor is quiet now. Uh, okay, I recorded another segment on the microcorder uh, web core at one and seven eighths and uh, played it back and it sounded great on the web core. So now let's play it back on the Continental. I wanted to do one more recording on the web core uh, microcorder running at one and seven eighths inch and then put it on to the uh, continental 101 to, to see and do a comparison to make sure our pitch is right and that they're pretty close to being accurate at one and seven eighths the web core um, is pretty much all original so other than uh, some performance uh, cleanups and things like that it should be recording uh, dead on at one and seven eighths so we'll take this tape now that we've recorded on the web core, move it over to the Continental and play it back and listen to it. Okay, so it's a little bit slow, just a little bit slow. But when you do a recording on the tape recorder itself, obviously it's going to play back at the same speed that it recorded, unless there are some other issues. But that's the case here. So let's rewind this and we'll put her back together. tape recorder itself obviously it's going to play back at the same speed that it recorded unless there are some other issues but that's the case here so let's read great fidelity great fidelity on this tape recorder really really uh good quality audio for sure all right got it all put back together here and replaced one of the o-rings as you know and we're um i'm very pleased with the way it turned out it's a nice red accent the, the knob and the handle are red then the railco logo is red and so they like that red and cream combination of the 1960s i believe this is a 1963 model we'll do one more recording here and then i'm going to first i'm going to erase this tape demagnetize or erase this tape completely and i wanted you to hear it without anything on it what it sounds like
So that's some amplifier noise and some tape noise. So what we'll do is demagnetize this tape and um, get rid of all of the uh, recordings that we put on it. Even the re rewind is nice and quiet. Very pleased with the end result here. Okay. And, um, I, I guess I'm going to just have to go buy a O-ring. I was thinking maybe. Okay, so that's the... There's a little bit of background noise even on that recording. But let's rewind it all the way and uh, demagnetize this tape. I know I keep saying demagnetizing the tape, and I guess technically that's what we are doing. Um, but I think the proper term is erase. get back up here and reload it. Okay, I've got the tape back on the recorder after demagnetizing it or erasing it. And um, we're going to record something, but I wanted you to hear, okay, we were at seven or six or where, I think we were at seven and or six before. Hear the difference? Major difference in uh, tape hiss. Eliminated the tape hiss now that we've uh, erase this tape bulk erased it so let's let it run ahead just a little bit and then we'll do a final uh, voice recording here alrighty let's see yeah we've got a needle bump here can you see it in the light there checking one two three check one two three check check yeah okay and we're at a volume level of about a seven, six or a seven. So we should be pretty hot. And we'll do a voice recording here on this newly erased tape to see how it's going to turn out for an audio recording. Alrighty, let's see. Yeah, we've got a needle bump here. Can you see it in the light there? Checking one, two, three, check one, two, three, check, check. Yeah, okay. And we're at a volume level of about a seven, six or a seven. So we should be pretty hot. And we'll do a voice recording here on this newly erased tape to see how it's going to turn out for an audio recording. Very nice. Cynthia Sylvia Stout would not take the garbage out. She'd wash the dishes and scrub the pans, cook the yams and spice the hams, and though her parents would scream and shout, she simply would not take the garbage out. And so it piled up to the ceilings, coffee grounds, potato peelings, brown bananas and rotten peas, clumps of sour cottage cheese. It filled the can, it covered the floor, it cracked the windows and blocked the doors with bacon rinds and chicken bones, grippy ends of ice cream cones, Prune pits, peach pits, orange peels, gloppy glumps of cold oatmeal, pizza crusts and withered greens, soggy beans and tangerines, crusts of black burnt buttered toast, grizzly bits of beefy roasts. The garbage rolled on down the hall. 
wall. It raised the roof. It broke the walls. I mean greasy napkins and cookie crumbs. Gobs of gooey bubble gum. Cellophane from old bologna, rubbery, blubbery, macaroni, peanut butter, caked and dried, curdled milk and crusts of pie, moldy melons, dried up mustard, eggshells mixed with lemon custard, cold French fries and rancid meat, yellow lumps of cream of wheat. <sighs> At last, the garbage reached so high that finally it touched the sky. And none of her friends would come over to play. All the neighbors moved away. And finally, Sarah, Cynthia, Sylvia, Stout said, Okay, I'll take the garbage out. But then... Of course, it was too late. The garbage reached across the state from New York to the Golden Gate, and there in the garbage she did hate. Poor Sarah met an awful fate to which I can't right now relate because the hour is much too late. But children remember Sarah Stout and always take the garbage.